Hey guys, uh, today's video is going to be about the uh, Sony Hi-Fi system that I've had for um, coming up in 26 years and uh, this thing this thing has a really good sound out of it but the only issue is that in the UK market it was supplied with a tape CD tuner and a phono input. So the difficulty is that to repurpose a lot of this old Hi-Fi equipment realistically these days you do need to have an auxiliary uh, in to allow you to feed like stuff like your smartphone uh, audio uh, things like a uh, google chromecast um, some of the amazon products that allow you to play music through uh, an auxiliary output and uh, even your tv system so you could replace your um, your crappy tv speakers with one of these hi-fis and really boost the bass response you get and the quality of the sound so I decided to try and have a look to see if I could find a circuit diagram for this machine online anywhere and I came across this website here called Hi-Fi Engine and they had the, the service manual for this particular model uh, available. So I downloaded that, you have to sign up to their website, uh, just create an account but it's fairly straightforward. Then you can download the manual here. And then when I downloaded the manual, I was able to find the section of the circuit that I was looking for that um, took in the inputs from the phono and then boosted them through a preamplifier here, which is this section, uh, put them through a switch and then into the line amplifier. So just to describe what's going on, I just uh, tried to separate this out into a few sections here just to show you what, the, what you need to do to, um, to fix this. So to convert from phono to auxiliary, we have to bypass the pre-amplifier circuitry. And what's interesting is that it looked like in the design of this hi-fi that there was actually an option to have the L and R channels in as an auxiliary in some markets. But it looks like in the Europe and in the UK, it was just set up as a phono uh, based on the fact that, you know, if you have a phono line in, it's, the, it's basically a turntable input. So I don't use a turntable, so I just decided I wanted to repurpose this and to switch it over to the auxiliary instead. So you'll see here, there's various parts of the circuitry that are labeled up and dashed sections here, um, and with commentary as to what region these uh, diagrams apply to. So it looks like this section here was for the UK only, and the EU only. So this section here must be the preamplifier. And then there's another few sections here where the values of certain resistors are switched depending on region as well. Um, and you'll see interestingly here as well, there's a bypass here that exists only in the EU and the UK and then in other regions then it was uh, bridged. So in other regions this would be actually bridged with uh, wire on the board. So I am not a circuit designer, I'm not an electronics expert, so I'm not advising that anybody copies what I do here, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas as to what you could do to, especially for this model, because we just need to remove the preamplifier. If you have another model of Sony and you can see a similar sort of switching chip here, you could also consider replacing the tape, CD or tuner inputs into this chip here. Uh, with an auxiliary out as well. So I believe that if you if you bypassed, if you're willing to sacrifice one of these parts of the system, the stereo system, if you put the input then through this chip, uh, so say for example the tape circuit here is coming in the pin 15 and pin 2, if you broke that circuit, uh, added in your auxiliary, that you could, by, uh, you could bypass the tape circuitry and then put in your auxiliary instead. So what do we need to do for this particular model here? So in this case, we can see that there's an amplifier for each channel. So it looks like the left channel is coming in here, coming through some circuitry, then being pushed through a power, sorry, a, a, a pre-amplifier. And the same is happening then for the right channel as well. So everything's labeled up pretty well here. We can sort of identify that we've got this IC750 that we look for on the board, and then we can see that all of these uh, components are labeled up really well. So Sony did a good job in making this easier for us. So the first thing we've got to do is we've ad we identify the two amplifiers on the board here. So it's IC750, which is the phono amp. So straight away you can see this uh, component here in black is the one that we need to remove. It has eight pins in it, which correspond to the 
four pins per channel one two three four five six seven eight so all we need to do is desolder these pins and remove that component and that's the first job done so i went ahead and did that um, if you don't know how to desolder components i would suggest having a look at other youtube videos i'm not going to go into it here this this video is specifically just how to do it how to uh, how to remove this um, preamplifier the next job then we have to do is because these two pins here are unbridged on the eu and uk model we have to create a new bridge across those two pins so i just step back a second just to show you where they are so these two pins here need connected and these two pins here need connected so we'll just do that manually and i've done that using some red wire across the two uh, pins here and just bridge those so where does that leave us so if we look at the circuit diagram now the feeds for the left and right channel because we've bridged here and here we're able to bypass the circuitry and get the line and feed directly into this chip so as you can see the left channel is coming in bypassing the circuit and then going into pin 12 the right channel is coming in doing a loop then bypassing the preamp and then coming into pin one so i also had a thought about this that we, ideally we would want to probably disconnect all of this circuitry as well from the input to these chips but i decided just to leave it um, because i just wanted to test out with this work um, without having to do that so ideally you would probably want to remove this resistor and capacitor here as well to to disconnect these two pins effectively from feeding the, the switching chip as well and do the same for the other channel as well. So I may do that at a future date just to make sure that um, the circuitry is as, as originally intended, that there's no extra noise uh, fed into the uh, chip. So next up, I'll just show you a video of the, um, the output of that and how it's working. Um, so uh, that that's pretty much it for the circuitry so let's just have a look at the amp actually working or the uh, hi-fi working There you go guys, uh, the audio off this thing is a massive upgrade over any TV, so definitely worth the upgrade um, if you can do this modification. Might do some, some more of these videos and some other stereos if I can get my hands on some, so uh, stay tuned for more videos like this. As always hit the like and subscribe button and thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.